Hi everyone, this is Jem Novan. It's been about two weeks since uh, I haven't uh, talked about econometrics, so I think it's time. And as you know, I released my 15th book, which I co-authored with a friend, uh, a very good friend. And uh, we've been promoting the book and I've been also working on other projects. So it kind of took me away from, uh, from my econometric work. So now I'm back at it. And today we're going to talk about outliers p-value and r square so why i decided to talk about these guys because they're very important and they basically determine the whole regression whether you you try to perform a um, a simple regression a multiple regression or even a uh, auto regressive model if you use time series data so so long as you do regress regression analysis those three are quintessential to determine the whole regression itself so we're going to talk first about outliers so outliers basically impact the fate of the regression what does it mean it means that one outlier can basically change the whole trajectory of the of the of the regression itself so we have two kind of outliers we have a leverage outlier and inferential outlier leverage outlier have no substantial impact on the slope they have no substantial impact on the slope and the influential outlier are the one that determine the fate so they basically change the trajectory they change the complete trajectory of of the regression i remember i wrote a paper uh, a couple months ago about uh i was trying i was trying to test uh the effect of uh, economic sectors on the national income of west african countries and nigeria which is of course the most populous and that has the highest uh gdp uh in west africa because of nigeria itself it completely changed the whole trajectory of the entire regression so yes so nigeria in that very instance in that very um paper that i wrote was the influential outlier because it changed the trajectory it changed the impact of the correlation so that's why outliers are important and and that you will see that on the visualization of your of, of your regression once you've done all the, all the calculation it will yeah, it will affect the calculations itself now we're going to talk about the p-value so the p-value it's tremendously important because it determines the statistical significance of two variables so what you guys need to know about the p-value is that there's that arbitrary concept of law that says that the p-value must be a lower should i say lower than 0 0.05 so lower than 5 percent so if the p-value is lower than 5 percent what does it mean it means that there is in fact the correlation between two variables so between the independent and the dependent variable if the if the p-value is above that it means that that correlation it's almost non-existent it depends if you have a p-value that is i don't know like 0 0.1 it means that there's no statistical significance between the two variables that you're trying to test. And how do you calculate the p-value? So you run basically what we call a z-test statistic. So the z-test statistic enables you to calculate, to test the hypothesis of, of your assumptions. So the elements that we have are, you have the mean, the sample mean, which is of course the x with the bar. You also, have the population sample that I forgot to in, include it here earlier. So you have the population sample, which is a kind of like a U. Then those two are over the standard deviation. In the previous no two videos, so two weeks ago, I talked about the standard deviation. So you it's over the standard deviation, and the standard deviation you divide that by the size of the sample. That's how you calculate the, the p-value. And the other method too. 
And plus, this is something you don't have to do. In, you have you don't have to do it by hand. Excel or whatever statistical software you use calculates that for you. But I'm just showing you here how to calculate by hand so that you know. But it's something that you don't have to do it by hand. And now I'm going to talk about the R square. So the R square determines the strength of the correlation of your regression analysis. So R square is the uh, the regression of the sum of square over the total sum of square. So what is the regression sum of square? So we call it R. R is of course the sum of y minus uh, so of the uh, observation minus its minus its uh, its mean times the observation of x minus the mean of x squared. All of that the sum squared over the sum of the observation of x minus its mean squared up to that is r and the total sum of square is simply uh, the sum of the observation of y minus the mean of y squared up so of course go back to um to the two previous videos that i made on it where i calculate the simple linear regression you guys will see that where i made i made i built a table where you can use all the 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 metrics you need to calculate your regression you guys will see those uh, metrics here too so which comes to r square equals the sum of y the observation of y minus its mean factor of the observation the observation of x minus its mean as well squared uh, let me get that yeah squared up over the sum of the observation of y minus its mean squared up over oops x of x here over the sum of the observation of y minus its mean squared so this is how you calculate pretty much the r square so the r square as i said it determines the strength of your correlation so how do you know if your r square is either strong or weak so the r square is determined so the r square is determined between zero and one so if your r square is when you check your r square if it's like 0 0.2 it means that the correlation of your regression is weak if your r square is like 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 it's 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 pretty strong so it is very important to see here so sometimes in your regression you will see that you have a p value that is uh that has a statistical significance which is less than five percent and yet you will see that the r square is still below 0 0.5 too so once it's 0 0.5 like 0 0.5 is you know the half between zero and one so you will see that although there is a statistical significance in your core in your in your regression there is the strength of the correlation is weak that's what it means so and then it can happen that sometimes you you have a r square that is pretty strong and you have a p-value that is above uh the five percent so in that case you can still go with it but uh it's not something that i suggest personally if you run a multiple regression try to eliminate all the variables that have a p-value that is higher than the five percent so that is my that is that would be my my suggestion but again all of that is calculated through excel excel does that for you or r or python whatever software you use for your for your statistics they calculate that for you i'm just simply showing you here how to do that by hand if you want to if you want to practice it so that is all for today guys and next week we officially starting the multiple linear regression until then take care